What is going on YouTube? It's Joseph Wells. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, thank you for watching and tuning in. And if you are a returning subscriber, I appreciate you for tuning into this video. The goal for today's video is to teach you the practical ways of living a God first lifestyle. This is something very important to me, something I've been living out and working on for a very long time. So let me know if something stands out to you. Drop it down in the comment section and that way I can see it, but also for other people who come and see your comments. And if by the end of the video there's something that resonates with you, consider giving this video a thumbs up. But if you're interested in learning about living a God first lifestyle, then consider subscribing. Appreciate it. So let's get right to it. Don't want to waste your time. The first thing we're going to talk about a relationship with God. Do you live your life with God? That's a real honest question question I have for you. Are you living your life with God? Let me give you an example of what that looks like. Just as you might call your friend and ask them to go shopping with you, go out to eat, it's kind of how we should be living with God. We should invite him into our day. You know, he wants to be a part of it. He really does wants to, he wants to be a part of our day. And so ask God and invite him into your day. You know, if you already have plans and you know, you have errands to run, invite him and ask him to join you. You will experience his presence and his love and he might even talk to you because God's always talking. And we're going to talk about that in this video as well. So another way to look at this is your relationship with God is kind of like a partnership, especially if you're a business owner. So if you are a Christian business owner and you are not running your business with God, you are missing out. Let me just say that. So how I run my blog and my YouTube channel, I actually go to God and ask him what he wants me to talk about. He knows more than me. He knows what his people need. So why wouldn't I go to him? So that's how this video was inspired actually. I asked God, what do you want me to talk about? And he gave me the points to talk about today and that is what I'm sharing with you now. You know, how I run my clothing brand, Source Christian Clothing. I ask God, you know, what do you want me to price the shirts at? What scriptures do you want me to use? I'm in partnership with him. God is the CEO and I go to him. I'm below him, so I go straight to him because he is the source. And so if you guys are interested in looking at those t-shirts, actually, go ahead and click the link down in the description and take a look. So it's the same for you too. It's a partnership. I want to encourage you to have this partnership with God in, in your business and also in your personal life. It will transform the way you th do things and it will take the pressure off of yourself as well. So the next thing we're going to talk about is number two, hearing his voice. But let me tell you something. The reason you're not hearing God's voice is because you are living in sin. Yes. When you are living in sin, especially if you're living in sin intentionally, there's a barrier between you and God. God is holy. We are not. We're sinners. We were born sinners. So there's a barrier between us. And you have to break down that barrier by repenting of your sin. So if you are living in sin, I want to encourage you to repent and confess it right away. Because you're not going to hear from God if you're living in sin. The other reason you're not hearing from God is because you have too many voices going on in your mind right now. Let me explain what that looks like. From my own personal experiences, actually. So I had joined a small group from, a small group from church, and for about six weeks, we had to cut out social media. We had to cut, cut it out at least a minimum of two hours of social media per week, but I actually just cut it out completely because I wanted to really immerse myself into God. So I was consuming so much content from podcasts, YouTube videos, business, sales, everything you can possibly imagine. I was consuming it because I just wanted to learn and grow my knowledge. But it was actually starting to overwhelm me. Overwhelming so much that I was just like, dude, I don't even want to listen to this stuff anymore right now. So once we started the small group and I started taking, you know, that those voices, those videos, and stopped watching those things, and I, I just removed it completely, I felt so free. I felt completely free, 
and I felt like I was more open to God. And that's what happens when you clear your mind. You have to clear your mind so that you can actually hear God's voice because God is going to whisper to you. He's a gentleman. He's not going to just overpower everything unless he wants to. But God is a gentleman. He's going to whisper things to you. And sometimes you might even confuse your voice for God's voice and God's voice for your voice. So it's important to clear your mind. You have to clear your mind. And that's exactly what we did in our small group. And it was huge. It was absolutely incredible. So as I mentioned, here's how you're going to overcome it. You know, you're going to repent and confess your sins. You know, remove social media and other content that you're consuming. It's more of secular content, you know, secular media. Whatever it is that's of the world, remove it completely. And ask God. Again, this is where your relationship with God comes in. Ask him, God, how long do you want me to take away a removed social media? He might give you an answer of three days or a week, two weeks. And it's important to follow through with that and listen to him because he knows what's best. Okay, so after you remove social media, you know, you start to open up your your mind and your heart to God because you're going to be talking with him reading his word and you're not going to have so many you know voices in your head so i'm going to give you this analogy i don't know if it's going to make sense but i'm going to give it a go because i just felt like something that's on my mind if i was whispering to you you would lean in and get closer so that you could hear me right but let's say you were across the room and there were three other people in the room with us and they were talking and you were across the room and I started to whisper to you. You couldn't hear me because I'm too far from you. And other people are talking. There's other voices going on in the room. The only way for you to hear me is to come closer and lean in and drown out the voices around you. And it's the same way with God. Sometimes we are so far from God because of sin and the voices in our head. We have to drown out those voices and get closer to God. Scripture says that you draw near to God, he will draw near to you. So I really hope that resonated with you. I felt like that was really good. So the more room in your mind, the more room God has to speak to you and for you to hear him. So quiet your mind and you will start to develop that hearing voice of God. Okay? So... You know, a relationship with God starts with a dialogue. No more monologue conversations or prayers. I understand, like, you know, I love to vent and just give everything to God. But it's important to listen as well. It's it's a dialogue. It's not no monologue. When it comes to your relationship with God and you hearing his voice, you talk and then you hear him talk. And so here is a framework that you can follow that will change the way your relationship with God is. Okay, so here it is. Ask God a question. Then you listen. Write down what you feel you heard. And this can be presented to you in many different ways. Sometimes you feel things. Sometimes you see things. Sometimes you hear things. And it can happen in a way that is how God wants to communicate to you. After you write it, then pray about it. See what scripture says about it. So the hardest part is learning to quiet your mind and soul. Of course, we're human beings. We're always worried. We're always thinking. There's so many thoughts going through our minds, which is why it's important to remove social media from your life for a period of time so that you have enough room in your mind to hear God. So you have to invest that time with God. And it's important to invest that effort, just like you would invest time and effort into your friends, your uh, you know romantic relationships. You have to invest that time into God. So you can't hear God if you're doing all the talking. So it's important to listen. I can't stress that enough. And we're going to recap all this at the end of this video. Number three, sharing his word. You know, I think it's so important to share the, his God, God's word with people around you. Share a verse with someone who, you know, needs an uplifting verse. It's easy to pull out your phone and look up an uplifting verse and share it with them if they're not Christian or if they are, you know. Sharing his word, you know, confirms what you believe and 
helps you memorize the scriptures. And another way to share God's word is through your testimony. This is so big. You know, sharing your testimony is sharing your life story. You know, what were you doing before you met God and before God came into your life? And talk about how God changed your entire life and turned it around. You know, I can share that with you right now. I was somebody who used to drink, party. I used to sell weed in college. And I was just living in sexual sin. I was a party animal. And then once I started to follow God, all of those things changed. I used to listen to rap music, all that secular music. But it just, as I started to follow God and love God first and more, I started to remove those things. That's part of my testimony. And sharing that with people is a natural way to share God's love and God's favor and how God redeemed me. And you can do the same thing too. So another way to share God's word is prepare yourself. Study God's word. Every day that you're reading, you can write down a scripture that really resonates with you and memorize it. I love to use note cards. I have dozens of note cards with scriptures and I'll read them every day to memorize them. And it's a great way to do that and study God's word because God's word in Joshua 1.8 says to study and meditate on his word. So when you meditate on his word and you memorize it, you are prepared and equipped with God's word to share with people. Sharing God's word is, it brings so much joy. I, I really love sharing God's word. And that's why I'm here with, with you right now. I'm sharing God's word and, and I'm talking about God because I love him so much. Okay, moving forward, number four, obedience. This is a big one, let me tell you. When God says to do something, you have to do it. For example, let's say you had you know, a mishap with a friend and you don't talk anymore. God says to go apologize to that person. You go and apologize to that person. That's what, that's what obedience is. You have to do it. Even if you don't want to, you have to put your pride away. You have to go and apologize and, and do it. If you look back in all of the Old Testament, you see Abraham, Joseph, Jacob, Isaac. They were obedient to God. They were obedient. And when you are obedient to God, you open a door of blessings. And it's amazing to see what God can do for you when you are obedient to him. That means living out his word, doing what it says, following what he says, and living like him. When you do those things and you're obedient, God will open a door for you. Deuteronomy 28 talks about you know, what happens when you are obedient to God. But it also talks about what happens if you're not obedient. So I would encourage you to go read that. So that wraps up this video. I really hope something resonated with you. So to recap, number one, have a relationship with God. You know, talk with him. Invite him into your day. And number two, hearing his voice. I can't stress that enough. If you want to hear God's voice, repent of your sins, confess them, remove voices from your mind, and start to ask God questions. And I would encourage you to ask yes or no questions when you're starting out. If you're asking God a full question about something, it's going to be very hard to hear him because you're not, you're not used to it yet and you have to adjust to it. It takes time and effort. Trust me. So ask God a yes or no question and he will give you an answer. Listen. So ask God a question. Listen. Write it down. Okay. And the hardest part, remember, is to quiet your mind and soul. So you have to practice that. Now, number three, sharing your testimony. Share your testimony. Talk about how God redeemed you and changed your entire life. You know, sharing your testimony can help somebody else see what God is doing through you, and they might even accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior as well. And number four, one of the most important, obedience. Obey what God tells you to do, and your life will radically change. I hope this video helped you. I hope it brought some insight and wisdom and I hope you start doing these things every single day and watch your life and your walk with God become more intimate and way deeper. 
If you really liked this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you want to learn more about the God First lifestyle and just more about God's word, then consider subscribing because we will be posting videos just like this. All right. God bless. Talk to you soon.